Okay, let us start our class. Uh, last class we were talking about uh, this. Uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Yeah, this is where we were. Um, uh, we talked about eigen values, we told that zero vectors can be eigenvector, however eigenvalues can be zero. And we saw a few examples. And uh, then we talked about the characteristics equation and the roots of the characteristics equations tells the eigen values and this is what we saw in the last class saw a few examples and the same characteristics yeah, equation you. if we extend a little further we can easily get the eigen vectors yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let us see the example again. A is equal to 1, 2, 4, 3 and uh, so for this uh, what are the eigenvalues that we did uh, A minus lambda i and its determinant is equal to zero so yeah how much is the answer one minus uh, lambda two four ma four three minus lambda
So these are the two eigenvalues we have. <coughs> and uh, the same thing if I substitute to the equation that we had already, that is, uh, we wrote something, what is that? Bx equal to zero. We wrote that one. Yeah, b x equal to zero, where b is a minus lambda i. So a minus lambda i x equal to zero. In this equation, if I put, I can easily get the eigenvectors. Well, let us check uh, what eigenvectors I am getting here. So for each lambda, I'll get uh, an eigenvector. So here I have one, two, four, three, minus, I'll take lambda one. So this is minus one. I'll make it as uh, x1, y1 is equal to 0. So this would be like uh, minus minus plus. So this becomes uh, 2244 two, four. <clears throat> So I have the and non trivial solutions like uh, 2x1 plus 2y1 equal to 0, 4x1 plus 4y1 equal to 0. Well, the equations are same. So It's uh, something like uh, x1 is equal to minus y1. So this particular vector, x1 vector, x1 vector, let me write it as uh, x1, y1. This is equal to minus y1 y1 or if i take y1 common this becomes 1 1 so now it is up to y1 whatever arbitrary value i take it should work so uh, x1 is equal to let me take y1 is equal to 1 so this becomes one, one. Sometimes, <coughs> sometimes we try to make this as a unit vector, this eigenvector as a unit vector. <coughs> so 
So we take this one as X1 is equal to it becomes a unit vector. But the point to be noted here that <clears throat> I can take any y1. y1 is arbitrary. I can take any y1. So as y1 is arbitrary, we can have multiple or in multiple possibilities. of x1 however but all of them are linearly dependent Similarly, if I take the other lambda value, lambda 2, this one we did for lambda 1. This one we did for lambda 1. Similarly, for lambda 2, if we uh, check, so lambda 2 is equal to So we have equation 
one, two, three. minus 5 times 1 0 0 1 x2 y2 this is equal to 0 so comes minus 4, 2, 4, um, 3 minus 5, minus 2, 4, minus 2. So from here we have the set of equations like Four x two minus two y two equal to zero, and the first equation is minus four x two plus two y two. Let me erase this one. In either case, uh, in either case, uh, it is like uh, x2 is equal to y2 by 2. So that's what x2 is equal to x2 y2 is equal to y2 by 2 So again, whatever y2 you take, that uh, y2 is again arbitrary, and whatever y2 we take, that will lead to an eigenvector. Okay. So let us summarize some of the things that are, what are the takeaways of this class?
of a matrix do not change direction when they are multiplied with the matrix and that is what we have written a x is equal to lambda x right eigen vectors x they do not change the direction they do not change their direction uh, when they are multiplied so x is equal to lambda x now uh, what will happen if we multiply uh, this equation again with a so it's something like a times ax is equal to a times lambda x this is equal to lambda is a scalar quantity right so if i take lambda out side so this becomes a x which I can further write it as lambda square x or if I generalize this one this actually becomes a to the power k x is equal to lambda to the power k x OK. And in the same way. I can also write. A to the power minus one. X that is a inverse X. Is equal to. Lambda inverse X. And this is possible only when lambda is not equal to zero. So this uh, i n vectors are actually very special. They are dependent on A, the matrix A. They're dependent on the matrix. And uh, most of the matrices, most of the n cross n matrices have n independent eigenvectors. And of course, there will be n different eigenvalues. So let me write it, this one. Most of the n cross n matrices have n
different eigenvalues and they have n independent again we are back to that n independent vectors here it is eigen vector that's right what happened to this okay so if we have an independent eigen vectors let us combine those eigen vectors let me write this one as v is equal to v is equal to c1 times x1 Let me erase this one. This is looking bad. v is equal to c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 plus c n times x n so we are back to our good old linear combination and the same thing if i multiplied by a the matrix a so this is a v is equal to uh this is a vector it's a linear combination of n independent eigen vectors but this is again a vector right so that is what i have done a v is equal to c1 lambda 1 x1 plus c2 lambda 2 x2 cn lambda n xn or if i multiply by uh, or if i write in this way a to the power k it's again the same thing a to the power k v is equal to c1 lambda 1 to the power k x1 plus c2 lambda 2 to the power k x2 
Excellent. Here we have two scenarios actually. What will happen if lambda is uh, greater than one? And uh, sorry, lambda one is greater than one. Or uh, so to say lambda one is less than one. I mean, as the value of k increases, if lambda value is less than 1, that particular component will disappear. Isn't it? That particular component will disappear. Okay. Mm. Uh, okay. So to conclude today's class, let us write few more properties. Then we'll say it goodbye. <coughs> uh, one of the properties uh, trace.
is usually we call it as the sum of the elements of the main diagonal and with eigen values it's actually the sum of the eigen values and another property is uh, A matrix is singular if and only if it has zero eigenvalue. Um, Uh, here again, the eigenvalues of an upper triangular or lower triangular matrix are the elements on the main diagonal. Here again, that LU factorization helps you a lot. Make it uh, lower or upper triangle, then easily you can get the eigenvalues. This uh, fourth one we have already seen that uh, A inverse X is equal to lambda inverse X. That part we have already seen.
lambda x is equal to lambda x. So alpha a x is also alpha lambda x. So alpha lambda is also an eigenvalue of the scaled matrix A. Yeah, lambda minus c is also an eigenvalue for a minus c i. Yeah, the last important. No, seven. A transpose. This is actually, in fact, quite useful in image processing. This particular, the seventh one. You get lots of help from this particular one. Product of eigenvalues of a matrix is equal to the determinant of the matrix. So like that, so we have a couple of properties. So this properties in one way or other in multiple domains of computer science, they actually help a lot. <clears throat> After all, <clears throat> whenever you are going for any kind of matrix operation. In fact, <clears throat> almost every problem domain that you take care. 
will be related to matrix. And these eigenvalues, eigenvectors, they actually come in a great help. Okay, we'll stop here. See you in the next class with something new. Thank you.